Hi everybody. So we know arrays bring a lot of good things to the table when it comes to dealing with the collection of data. But we also know that behind the scenes, arrays are objects. We're in JavaScript. In JavaScript, everything is an object, including our array, including strings, numbers, booleans, and a wide variety of types that we have to often deal with. Now in this video, we're going to take a deeper look at the overlap between arrays and objects and how to make sure that we are doing the right thing and not getting into, you know, messy territory. So at a high level, we know that an array is just two degrees removed from a plain old object, where we go from array to array that prototype to object that prototype. Now, the, the full visualization is something that I have linked to at the bottom. It's part of the article. But here's an approximate view of what a typical array called my items with three items, A, B, and C, would look like, and what the overall prototype chain would look if you were to draw all the arrows between them and how they all map between all of each other. So it's a pretty complicated chain for any object we'll get into, but the end result is that no matter what we create, it all inherits from an object because that's just how JavaScript rolls. Now, when you're using the bracket notation, which is a very common way for working with arrays, you can kind of see this you know, kind of coming to play. So we, here we have a greetings array. We have five values in it, hi, sup, hello, yo, and hey. And if I want to access the third item, I just use console.log and I put greetings and a bracket value of three, which is the index position for yo. And that's what ultimately gets printed out. And you can see a visualization of what this actually looks like. Now, this bracket notation, though, is not unique to arrays. If anything, it's more fundamental. It's available as part of objects as well. Here's an example where I have an object called foo. And there are two, proper, two keys on it, a and b. And it has the values hello and goodbye. And what I'm doing now is I'm creating a new property on foo called c, and I'm setting its value to blah. And so if I were to preview what this looks like, if you were to only focus on a console.log statement, it looks almost like the array syntax we sort of saw before, where I have a name of something, then I have the bracket syntax, and I pass in a particular value. In this case, it's a string, whereas the arrays, it is a number. So the key values we can specify for objects, they can be a lot of value identifiers. We kind of saw that in the previous example, where they go from numbers to text and, and all sorts of things. For arrays, though, the rules are more specific. The key has to be a positive integer value. So if you want the data that we're dealing with to be treated like an array, this bolded part is important because the following is totally valid. So let me give you an example right here. Notice what's going on. We have my array is 1, 2, and 3. I'm setting a new array value called my array. And notice what I'm passing in here. Instead of passing in a number, I'm passing in the key value of foo. And I'm setting it equal to what's up. Now, if we were to console log this, you can see that console log my array zero gives you a value of one, and my array bracket of foo, the string we added earlier, gives you a value of what's up. So, in many ways, we're kind of mixing and matching a world where we're using traditional array syntax to access a value, and we're using the more object centric syntax for setting a value. And if you were to look at my array visually, you'll see that one, two, and three are appropriately represented by index positions zero, one, and two. And then the value of what's up what's up is represented by the key value of foo, which is a string. And if we were to kind of you know, break it up a little bit, you'll see that our object my array is actually not fully an array anymore. By having done what we did, our entire object is broken into two territories. The first part is the array region, which is one, two, and three, and the object region is there by itself. And the important part here is that all of the array methods that we have, well, most of the array methods we have will only operate on the array region. So for example, if you were to see what is the length of my array, you will not include the, the value of what's up. You'll only have one, two, and three showing up. So length value would be three. And likewise, if you're looping through an array using the index position or using a for loop, you'll only go through zero, one, and two. You will not cover the foo part at all. So that's one way you can kind of make sure that even if you're mixing and matching arrays and objects, which you really should not be doing, but if you happen to get in a situation, in many cases, it's fine. You'll be able to deal with the array part as an array and the object part as an object. Now, it is JavaScript, so as with all things, there is an exception. There's an exception if you're using the iterators in terms of for of and the for in kind of an approach. Now, the way for of works is that it only works on array values. So you only get the values 1, 2, and 3. What's up is not shown at all. Now, for in, though, for in is interesting. It goes over all enumerable properties that would be in an object. That includes our array indexes, but it also includes our object with the value of, of foo, which is like the, the foo property. And so that's also included here. So if you're using for in, you will not only iterate through all of array content, but you'll also iterate through all of the object content 
as well. So that's a quirk you need to kind of keep in mind if you're using for in or for of in terms of how to make sure you're iterating through an array in a supported fashion. So there you have it, a quick overview of where the, the lines between objects and arrays exist and how they oftentimes are blurred and work well together and how in certain cases they're very, very specific and separate. So that way you can deal with arrays as an array and object as an object. And of course, there are some areas like with the, with the for in approach where you might have cases where you might go over all the items in your array or object, which includes the array part and the object part. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions, post in the forums at forum.group.com. You can also post in the comments below, but I don't check them frequently. And for technical things, the lack of code formatting makes this a, a terrible place to post your questions. So go to the forums, forum.group.com, and I and others will be happy to help you out. And if you like this video, if you like my style of explaining things, tell your friends and enemies. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that are coming along. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter, on Facebook, and pretty much anywhere where Krupa might exist. 90% of the time, it'll be me. 10% of the time, it'll be someone else named Krupa. And that's cool too. All Krupas need to be followed. So go ahead and go for that. And lastly, I, pre I create books of all the content that you often see here. And so for this one, I brought a book called Arrays from Noob to Ninja. So if you want to read this in Kindle or your back edition, instead of looking at a video on your screen, buy this book and let me know how you like it. And with that, I will see you all next time.